What's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Sunday edition of the Pandemic Update for Sunday, March 10th, 2024. If you are new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update with all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Let's face it, there's a lot of viruses out there, and each of them could impact your health if you get infected by one of them. So if you want to stay informed, subscribe to my channel down below. If you want to see more content like this, give this video a thumbs up. If you want to help other people stay safe, by all means, share this with anyone you know. Today, we're going to do a few news stories. We're also going to take a look at some wastewater sites. Not really much data to talk about today, so we'll just run over a few wastewater sites today. You may notice I am not on camera today. That's because we are having technical difficulties with our camera. I hope to be back on camera again tomorrow. That's fine. When we first started the pandemic update, I never did go on camera. So there is that. Alrighty, starting off today, Penn Medicine, University of Pennsylvania, is securing 2.1 million grant for long COVID research. And it looks like this is going to be uh, COVID in the gut. In other words, GI issues that they are going to uh, target when they uh, do their studying. So this is some good news. Moving on to this now. It's a new study that just came out. Vaping may increase the risk of catching COVID as users giving grim warning in new study. So if you're someone that likes to vape a lot, yeah, not a good idea with COVID being around. It can increase your risk of catching COVID. How about that? Now we move over to my website, datareport.info. It's a vast, it's a large a resource of information. It's really good if you're trying to find something out. Again, that is datareport.info. I just added this study last night and several other studies. Study of 1 million U.S. kids shows vaccines tied to a lower risk of long COVID. This is some really good news. And this comes from CIDRAP, which uh, they always have some fantastic stuff listed on their site. All right, I wanted to show you this. Speaking of long COVID, two things I tweeted last night. The first one says, living with long COVID, you feel like you have been poisoned. Yep, one person said that. Then another person said, living with long COVID, woman says she felt dead after 11 ER visits and three heart surgeries. Oh, that is just awful that they've had to go through that. And so many people are going through that. You know what the best way is to prevent long COVID? Not getting infected at all. You know how you could not get infected? by continuing to wear a mask and take precautions. The less chance you have of getting infected, the better off you are. If you get infected, automatically you have the chance of getting long COVID. You do not want long COVID. For some people, it's not a big deal. For other people, long COVID is devastating and life changing because it completely changes their life. Some people have to quit their jobs. Some people have to sell their houses. It gets that bad with long COVID. All right, let's take a look at some air quality values across the country. Then we will move on to wastewater. We'll spend about five to seven minutes on wastewater sites today. And you can see, for the most part, air qualities across the country as this loads up are not bad. We do have a few minor concerns with what's going on from Texas and Oklahoma. And of course, the West Coast, it's not coming up, but the West Coast. So there you go. California, that continues to be a problem. But Pacific Northwest, that's about the best we've seen for you in Washington and Oregon in some time. Idaho has a few moderate sites today. All right, let's jump over to some wastewater sites now. We'll take a look at the CDC wastewater page. And for those who have been following me, you know that these orange and red colors, that's really high levels of COVID. Where are we seeing that? Well, we are currently seeing that in the east from Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, on up to Virginia. Yes, you continue to find yourself in some higher transmission than you should be at. It would be nice to see more blues, but we're not seeing it there. Look at this, especially North Carolina. A lot of orange and red wastewater sites indicating your COVID levels are still high at this time. Northern Ohio, Northern Indiana, and Chicago area, right along that I-90 where I-80 joined together for a few states. Yes, there's still a belt there of moderate transmission 
for COVID as well. Let's check in and see what's going on with Chicago this week. Hopefully, we can see Cook County dropping. And no, no, we don't. Cook County, wow, look at that. 1,134, 897 population, and your wastewater continues to rise at this time. And that does go in with what we're seeing in Chicago with the rise in a uh, slight rise. It's not major, slight rise in emergency department visits. But again, your wastewater levels are being stubborn, and they were in the high category. Here's another Cook County. Well, much, much smaller. 13,000 population, but the wastewater here continues to rise as well. Let's continue our tour. Quite a bit of orange still in Wisconsin and Michigan as well. Houston, Texas, you're continuing to see some orange and red as well. And when we come out to the West Coast, not that bad. More blues. There is some orange up in Northern California, but nothing terribly concerning. And Utah, we are seeing some lighter blue orange, and there is still one red site in Summit, Utah. Look at this, 7,800 uh, population, but it has leveled off. Maybe, hopefully, it will start dropping again soon. And Salt Lake, and a lot of these other orange sites at this time, and these blue sites, they are dropping at this time. Let's take a look now at wastewater scan. And what we want to do first is we want to click on the national uh, COVID chart here. And we can see nationally, now this is not what we want to see, but on the national level, let me go back here. The map, you can see the COVID level, it is medium. In other words, it is starting to drop in the United States, which is really a good thing at this time. Let's take a look at some wastewater sites. How about we go up to... Uh, Portland, Maine. Let's see what's going on there. We'll do about six wastewater sites today. Portland, Maine, COVID levels are high, but they are dropping at this time. RSV is dropping at this time. Influenza A, influenza B is dropping at this time. HMPV and even norovirus, which had a big rise in February, is now starting to rapidly drop, which is really a good thing to see. And continuing on here, we want to stay up in New England. Let's come down to, how about we come down to New Hampshire? What's going on at the Hall Street Concord facility? And we see here, COVID, the overall trend is dropping. RSV was dropping. Now it's starting to rise ever so slightly. Influenza A, slight rise. Influenza B is dropping at this time. HMPV, not much of an issue. Norovirus is dropping at this time. And no MPOX issues in this area. Continuing on, now let's go to the southeast U.S. And let's take a look at what is going on down in Miami, Florida. Hopefully we can do this because there have been problems with the data. Eh, it's kind of sketchy data, but you can see here at the end, medium for COVID, not rising at this time. RSV, ever so slight rise. I wouldn't even say that's a rise at this point, more so just a bouncing around off the bottom. Influenza A, no big deal. It still says high, but if you look at the chart, it's low. Influenza B is starting to rise again. Norovirus is also starting to rise. HMPV starting to rise and no issues with MPOX, but there are some detections of hepatitis A at this time. Continuing on with the southeast, let's go over to New Orleans, Louisiana. How about we do the western uh, wastewater site there? Let's see what's going on. COVID is dropping. RSV, no issues at this time. Influenza A, slightly rising. Influenza B was dropping. Most recent update did rise ever so slightly. Norovirus is not doing too bad this time. It's it was rising. Now it's dropping, which is good to see. HMPV at this time, slightly rising, so that is good to see. MPOX, no major issues with that at this time. Continuing on, let's go out to the west now. How about we take a look at Las Vegas? Let's see what's going on there. COVID levels in Las Vegas are not doing too bad at this time. Matter of fact, they're very low. And RSV is medium at this time. Influenza A is rising ever so slightly, as is influenza B. Uh, norovirus high, but again, it's only rising slightly. It's not seen a rapid rise yet like we have seen in other parts of the country. All right, let's do one more wastewater site. Where is that going to be? I think it is going to be in Iowa. Let's go down to Iowa City area, or near there, and let's say Coralville, Iowa. 
And you can see the COVID levels here are low at this time. It's saying medium, but if you look at the chart, that is low and it's continuing to drop. RSV, it's steady at this time, holding stable. Influenza A is dropping after a brief rise. Influenza B continues to rise. And it does show a brief drop on the most recent update, but that could correct itself. Mpox, no issues at this time. And norovirus is flat at this time. All right, let's take a look at today's. EMS totals in Philadelphia, 713 EMS totals for Philadelphia on Saturday. And taking a live look at what's going on in Montgomery County. Wow, not one, not two, not three, not four, but five respiratory emergency calls at this time. That's not good. We're also seeing cardiac emergency, so that's never a good thing. Some heart problem calls in Chester County, Pennsylvania, and a sick person call as well. Let's take a look and see if New Jersey updated today. If New Jersey did not report many hospitals, there is no sense in reporting the number, but let's check anyhow. Yep, only 52 out of 70 hospitals reported in New Jersey. Alrighty, some quick notes and reminders. This week, for many colleges, will be known as Syllabus Week. What's that? It's the week after spring break where most people ditch classes and they go out and party instead. Please, if you're going to take part in that, please stay safe. Also, we're getting closer to St. Patrick's Day. A lot of St. Patrick's Day activities are going to be coming up. Please, if you're going to take part, mask up and stay safe. It is no joke. COVID can really destroy your life. You saw those tweets that I talked about earlier. Here they are again. Living with long COVID. Woman says she felt dead after 11 ER visits and three heart surgeries. You don't want that to happen to you. You also don't want to feel like you have been poisoned because, let's face it, that is just terrible. It would be devastating to your life. All right. My Twitter account is COVID Data Report. You can check that out. There'll be a link to it down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel. Give this a share to anyone you know. The more people we keep safe, the better. We will have another pandemic update again tomorrow, and I promise I will be back on video again tomorrow. We're going to get that fixed. So we'll see you all again tomorrow. Stay safe, everyone. Have a fantastic Sunday, and thanks for watching. Take care.